At this uh, session, we are talking about Newton's first law, or the, which is called as the law of inertia. Inertia or the laziness of the objects, I call it the laziness, because it, inertia means that the, the objects, they want to stay in whatever state that they are in. If they are moving, they continue moving. If they are at rest, they will stay at rest. Uh, unless there is an, another force acting upon them. Okay, let's see how we can uh, describe the Newton's first law of the motion. It says that the, all the objects tend to remain in their state of the rest, or if they don't move, they don't move, they don't want to move at all. Or if they are moving or in the motion, to stay or remain in their uniform motion in, in a straight line unless a resultant force or a net force acts on them. I mean, until the forces become unbalanced. If, it, if the forces are balanced, it's, they are not unbalanced. So, and there is no resultant force acting on them, they just tend to stay in whatever position that they are in, in whatever state of the motion that they are in. If they are, don't move, they don't want to move at all. And if they are in the motion on a straight line um, with a, a constant speed, they just uh, keep continuing on moving on that straight line with the same speed. Unless there is an unbalanced force or all called as a resultant force or a net force acting on them when the forces become unbalanced, okay? If the forces become unbalanced, that time the direction of the motion changes, I mean the speed of the motion changes or they are not moving, they stop moving or they are moving, maybe they may stop or they change direction. So be, um, if there is no resultant force, there is no net force, there is no unbalanced force and all the forces are balanced, what happens? If there are balance, no resultant. If the object is at rest, okay, it means there is no velocity, the velocity is zero, it's not moving. So what happens? There won't be any acceleration because this, the object stays at rest or doesn't move. No acceleration. But if the forces on the mass of the object, they are uh, balance or there is no net or resultant force. If the object is in the motion, what happens here? If it is in the motion, it means that the velocity is not zero. It has a velocity, it has a speed because it is moving. So after that, what happens? It stays in the, in the motion with the same velocity and because there is no acceleration. So, if you have balance forces on an object, if the object is not moving, it is at rest, so it stays at rest, or if it is moving, it just continues on the motion, on its own motion, um, with the same speed. The same speed or constant speed means that there is no acceleration, because the acceleration is the change in the speed of the uh, objects, or the change in the velocity or speed. Regarding the Newton's first law, you imagine that we have three ramps here, and you imagine that the, all the ramps are infinitely smooth, long enough. So imagine that the ramps here are very smooth, it means no friction here, we don't have any friction, and they are very, extremely long. So we put an object. Uh, like a marble here, and we actually push it down the ramp, that trigger, just to stop moving. And if you see, if the ramp is very smooth and very long, if uh, based on the Newton's first law, it speeds up, it speeds up down the ramp. And here, if you push it up, it will just moves up the ramp, but it's slowing down on the way. And here, if you have a horizontal, uh, perfectly horizontal ramp here, which is quite smooth and long, uh, if the marble is moving based on the Newton's first law, if, if it is obeying this law, so it means that it just keeps going and going and going on the smooth ramp. 
So based on the Newton's first law, if there are no forces, no friction forces, no other forces acting on the objects to slow down, if there is, imagine that you have a horizontal ramp here, very smooth, uh, no other forces apply on the object. If it is in the motion and it is in moving, so it just keeps going on and going on and on, okay, until and now the force, another resultant force acts on it. So based on the law, this marble sh should just keep going and going. So um, in our shell, we say that it's uh, called as a laziness or the lacking the ability to move. It is a tendency of an object to resist a change in its motion. So it's a tendency of an object to resist a change in its motion. Uh, what is the relationship between the mass of the object and the inertia? It means that the higher the mass of the object, the higher it would be the, its inertia. It means it is harder for us to overcome uh, the, its inertia and to move it. As you can see in the diagram, this person is moving 100. 30, for example, kilogram, and this one, 20 kilogram. It is harder for this person to actually move, um, to force and move this object. The people that are in, sitting inside the uh, car and it is, they are going with a very high speed, they will have the same speed as the car. But when the car slams into the wall, into the wall, the passengers, they won't stop. They will continue with this previous speed until you are actually they hit the dashboard. Here, the dashboard applies an outside force on them, so and they will be damaged and will hurt badly. The seat belts protects the uh, people or the passengers from their own inertia. Okay, what we said it was that. Uh, the inertia means the laziness, or as is uh, referring, uh, referring to the Newton's first law of the motion. And it says that the, it's referring to the lack of the um, tendency or ability for objects to um, make a change uh, in their states or to move. The relationship between the mass and the inertia is that the higher the mass of the object, it is harder to overcome its inertia. Um, it means that the inertia would be, would be higher. Um, here you have, uh, for example, a rock which is 130 kg and this one is 20 kg. Of course, for this person, he has to apply more force to overcome the inertia and to move these objects forward. And for this one, it's much more easier. Less force is needed. For example, um, we said in the law of inertia, that uh, if the object is at rest, it doesn't move, it means that it doesn't move because of the inertia that it has, it tends to stay and it's at rest, it doesn't want to move. So if you have a, you have a ball here on the ground, so if it is at rest, it means that because of the inertia, it stays at rest unless an unbalanced force or the net force acts upon it, like here. So it is not moving because the forces now are unbalanced. We have overcome. We have over. We have overcome the inertia. Now after that, the object keeps moving and moving. I mean, on the motion with the continuous uh, speed, constant speed, and on the same direction because uh, because the forces become now there are no net force apply on it. Until it is uh, another unbalanced force acts upon it. But this net, it is stopped by the net, so um, this actually wall or the net, whatever it is, it uh, causes the object to stop again. So if there is no force acting on it because of the inertia, that object just keeps, uh, stays at the rest or keeps moving like here. But here we have overcome the inertia, as you can see at these two uh, diagrams, because uh, the forces here are unbalanced. 
and also the same for that diagram.